हेलो स्टूडेंट्स माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर मित सी पटेल एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर इन मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट सिल्वर ऑफ यूनिवर्सिटी टूडे वी डिस्कस अबाउट द न्यू चैप्टर पम्प फ्रॉम बेसिक मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग सब्जेक्ट फॉर द फर्स्ट ईयर स्टूडेंट्स सो फर्स्ट वी डिस्कस अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्शन पार्ट द डेफिनेशन ऑफ द पम्प so the pump is a mechanical device which convey liquid from one place to another place let's take one example if i have a underground tank and i have over a tank as well and i need 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 to transfer the liquid or convey the liquid from underground tank to over a tank so by means of using the pump i can do so the pump is a mechanical device which convey liquid from one place to another place <coughs> now we discuss about the certain application of the pump so thermal based application first one is to feed the water into the boiler we already discussed in the previous subsequent lectures lectures we talk about the steam boiler parts so in the steam boiler chapter we discuss about the boiler water and hot flue gases and steam so to feed the water into the boiler we required a pump <coughs> second to circulate the water in the condenser we all need also need to use the pump and third one is the to circulate lubricating oil in the proper place second is the agriculture based and irrigation based <coughs> application to lift the water from deep well we are using the pump and to convey the water from one place to another another place also we are using the pump <coughs> now for the chemical industry for the chemical industry we are to convey the liquid chemical from one place to another place with the help of pump municipal water works and drainage system is also need a pump and hydraulic control system is also required the pump <coughs> now we talk about the classification of pump so basically we broadly we classify with the help two types first one is the positive displacement pump second one is a roto dynamic pump so first we uh, when we classify the pump the basic two types positive displacement pump and second one is the roto dynamic pump <clears throat> so what is the positive displacement pump and roto dynamic pump difference between two we discuss in the subsequent slide so first we talk about the positive displacement pump so this pump operates on the principle of definite quantity of liquid is discharged or displaced due to the positive or real displacement of the working element then and then we can call as a positive displacement pump <coughs> real displacement of work element like piston gear vane and screw so these are is called the positive displacement pump <coughs> so reciprocating pump is a one kind of positive displacement pump in reciprocating pump we sub classify so first one is the piston pump <coughs> in piston pump there are a two classification single cylinder double cylinder <coughs> in single cylinder we have sub classification single acting double acting and in a double cylinder we have two classify again two classification single acting and double acting second classification is reciprocating pump is bucket pump or third classification is plunger pump so based on classification pump two types positive displacement roto dynamic in positive displacement first one is called the reciprocating pump in reciprocating pump there are three types mostly the piston pump plunger pump and bucket pump and piston pump is also classified in two types single cylinder and double cylinder on both these two types we have a double acting single acting pump now second type in the positive displacement pump is a rotary pump a rotary pump is the motion of the uh, rotor is rotating motion so that is that that pump are called the rotary pump the motion of the impeller is rotary then and then is called the rotary pump if the motion of the piston cylinder element is a reciprocating type so that pump is called the reciprocating pump so in a rotary pump there are three types gear pump vane pump screw pump now we talk about the second classification of the pump is roto dynamic type now what is the roto dynamic pump what we, in which principle roto dynamic pump are work 
so these pumps operate on the principle of the rise in pressure energy of liquid by the dynamic action of the liquid again i repeat the pump operate on the principle of the rise in pressure energy of liquid by dynamic action of liquid so the dynamic action of liquid is carried out by revolving the wheel which has cowed vanes on it this wheel is known as a impeller and that type of pump we classify is called the centrifugal pump that type of pump is called the centrifugal pump so set the centrifugal pump is a types or classification of the rotodynamic pump and it work on the dynamic action of liquid <clears throat> so first one is the centrifugal pump we have a single stage centrifugal pump multi stage more than one stage that is called multi stage centrifugal pump second is called the propeller pump or we can called as a axial flow pump third one is called the mixed flow pump and fourth one is called the jet pump and air lift pump so these are the classification of the rotodynamic pump centrifugal pump single stage multi stage propeller pump or we can call as axial flow pump mixed flow pump jet pump and air lift pump now we discuss discuss about the simple geometry of pump or we can call as a simple terminology used in the pump so here you can see this is the pump this is area of the pump this is the motor which i show you this is the pump this is a suction line this line is called the suction line this line is called the discharge line this is the suction line this is the discharge line this is the underground tank this is called the overhead tank i wish to transfer from over underground tank to overhead tank with the help of this pump so this is the suction area so that the head is called the suction head this area is called the suction head and from this to overhead tank head this one is called the delivery head this called the suction head and from this to this called the delivery head and when we add add suction head plus delivery head that is called the manometric head that head is called the manometric head that is the total head this is use the foot wall so that the impurity will not get inside the suction pipe through pump and then is not the jam the pump now first we talk about the head what is head then we discuss about the suction head and delivery head what is head so it refer to different forms of energy required per unit weight of liquid to raise its desired height again i repeat it refers to the different forms of energy required per unit weight of liquid to raise it to a desired height so there are two types of suction heads first one is the suction head second one is the delivery head so it is the vertical height of the center line of pump shaft above the surface of liquid it is the vertical height of center line of the pump shaft above the surface of the liquid that distance is vertical distance is called the suction head and it is the vertical height measured from the center line of the pump to where the liquid is delivered or discharged or energy required to lift the liquid from pump to the end of the delivery pipe that vertical height is called the discharge head that vertical height is called the discharge head now the fourth one is called the velocity head so what is velocity head so it is kinetic energy carried away by the liquid at the end of the delivery pipe that created head is called velocity head and is denoted by hv so when we talk about the mathematical equation hv is equal to v square by 2g hv is equal to v square by 2g and v stands for the velocity of the liquid in pipe fifth one is the static head static head is denoted by the hst and it is a sum of suction and delivery head it is a sum of suction and delivery head in the previous figure 
we there we so i show you the suction plus delivery head is equal to manometric head but in manometric head we are considering the friction losses as well friction heads all well but here if we add only the suction head and delivery head then we add the total of the suction and delivery head is called the static head hst so mathematically hst is equal to hs plus hd hs stands for suction head and hd stands for the delivery head now talk about the manometric head so it is the total head required to develop by the pump from suction to delivery so it is the total head required to be developed by the pump that is called the manometric head now seventh term is the terminology is the water power so what is the water power so it is the power required by the pump to handle such a liquid to develop manometric head and what is the manometric head manometric head is called the total head developed by the pump so it is the power required by the pump to handle the liquid to develop manometric head so what is, what we can write the mathematically manometric head pw or for the water power pw is equal to rho g q h m rho is stands for the density of liquid g for the gravitational force q is the liquid discharged by the pump and hm is called the manometric head manometric head now next one is called the shaft power what is shaft power so it is the power input to the shaft of the pump by the motor so it is the power input that means we have to rotate that shaft if the shaft is rotated then the vacuum is created if the vacuum is created then the water gets sucks and then develop the pressure and it gets discharged to the required space so it is the power required or at the input shaft by the pump by using the motor so ninth one is the efficiency of the pump so it is the ratio of water power to the shaft power because the water power is called the output and the shaft power is called the input so water power to shaft power is the called the efficiency of the pump so mathematically we can write the eta p is equal to pw water power upon ps shaft power output upon input now we talk about the single acting reciprocating pump so here you can see the in the figure this is the simple arrangement of a single acting reciprocating pump so here you can see <coughs> these are piston cylinder arrangement so in piston cylinder arrangement there are the two valve one is the suction valve and second one is the delivery valve so this is the underground tank this is the overhead tank which we, we need to supply the water from underground to delivery or we can call it as a overhead tank so this is called the suction valve this is the suction pipe this is the delivery valve this is called the delivery pipe and we already studied the terminology of pump from the this level to center line of the pump is called the suction head and center line of the pump to the where we have to discharge the water that vertical height is called the delivery head so this is the delivery head this is the suction head if i add from this to this hs plus hd is called the static head we already discussed in the terminology of the pump so this is cylinder this is pump now what happen if pump go in this direction if the pump is go in this direction i will show you if the pump is go in this direction then what happen the vacuum is created in this portion in this portion in this portion vacuum is created when the vacuum is created in this portion then what happen the water will suck from this to this here to here so suction valve is open and water comes in the this portion in this portion and water will come in this portion after that the piston go from this side to this side piston go from this side to this side then the pressure is created so the suction valve gets closed and pressure due to that pressure whatever amount of water or liquid gets collected here it transfer uh, the delivery valve is open and it transfer from here to here the whole way liquid is transfer from here to here 
whatever liquid is there, it transfer from the delivery side. So this is called the single acting. What is the single acting? If we go from forward motion, or if we go for reverse motion, here you can see only in the one motion we can get the discharge. When the piston cylinder is going this direction, in this direction, then and then we can got the discharge. If we go in the this direction, then what happen? Only suction will take place. Here I I, I will mark you. Here is the in this direction suction will take place and in this direction only discharge will take place. So in the only one direction we get the output. That's why this this is called the single acting reciprocating pump. That's why this is called the single acting reciprocating pump. So if we use either or, that means the in forward motion we can get the output. If in reverse motion also we can get the output. Then how can we get so both if, if forward motion we can get and suction both and in for the out, out uh, backward motion or reverse motion also we can get the output that is that type of that type of pump is called the double acting reciprocating pump i will show you now we talk about the double acting reciprocating pump already we in the previous slide we already discussed about the single acting reciprocating pump so what is the difference between two single acting and double acting in single acting we got only in the one di output in the one direction one side is for the suction side second side is for the delivery side but here if we, we what we can do if we go forward motion then also suction is completed and the delivery is completed if we go reverse motion then also the suction and delivery will get so here here i, I will show you here i will have a two valves one is delivery d1 Second delivery was is D2. Here second delivery was a D2, and first delivery was is D1. So these are the two delivery valves, and two are the suction valve S1 and S2. And this is the uh, down uh, underground tank, and this is the overhead tank where we require the delivery. Now what happened? I I will consider either or direction so that you can same as for the second direction. Now I will take the example. If the, my piston is go in this direction, if my piston is going this direction, at that we have to look the cross connection S1 and D2, S2 and D1. So if we go in this direction, whatever amount of whatever amount of water we get collected here, it's deliver it go from this direction, from D1. Why is good delivery pipe to the delivery pipe? Whatever amount of liquid is collected by s1 is get discharged the same time the vacuum is created at the back side of the piston and from the same time when the d1 valve is open for the delivery at the same time s2 valve is also open for the suction and the water whatever amount of water gets sucked in place into the this part so at the same time d1 delivery and s2 suction valve are open so suction is also take place same time delivery also take place now now we consider the second part of the pump what now what happen i will i will change the direction so that you can you can get better idea now look at this now the my piston is go piston cylinder is go in this direction piston cylinder is go in this direction now what happened look at this same time whatever in the previous stove whatever amount of water is collected during due to uh, open s valve s2 valve is open so then s2 valve is open whatever amount of water is collected here now in this direction that is called the water is the pressurized and due to pressurize the water it's transfer or d2 valve is open and water is transferred to the required place at the same time back in the back side of the piston what happened the vacuum is generated when the vacuum is generated due to vacuum the s1 valve is open and using the s1 valve the new water gets sucked inside the piston cylinder so same time s2 is open d1 is open same time the backward stove, backward position so s1 and D2, D2 is also open, S1 is also open, S1 stands for the suction part and delivery stands for the delivery part. So by this way, if we go for the forward motion or we can go for the backward motion, then and then also we can get the 
output then also we can get the output so in the either or direction we get the output that's why this is called the double acting reciprocating pump that's why this is called the double acting reciprocating pump now we talk about the air vessel it is a similar arrangement of single acting reciprocating pump just we need what we we can modify it we can add air vessel at the suction side and air vessel at the delivery side so what is the function of air vessel what happened you already know the uh, ar uh, arrangement of single acting reciprocating pump you already know the working and construction of the single acting reciprocating pump so i no need to much more discuss on that just i go through the air vessel part so what is the function of air vessel here you can see some amount of water is inside the air vessel and above the air vessel there is a certain compressed air same for the delivery side <coughs> so what happens sometimes the fluctuation occurs sometimes what happens the fluctuation occur inside the pump we cannot get the continuous output so at that time what at that time what happened if we have we require our delivery is a 10 liter but we got the fluctuation in the delivery get we can get the 8 liter 9 liter or something 8.9 or 7 whatever amount of water get fluctuated so at that time what happens whatever fluctuation whatever minimum water required to complete the delivery that 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 part of the water gets from the this air vessels then if we get the simple motion if we get a simple normal condition of the pump we get the 10 liter of output at that time what happened the water gets again water gets in place inside the air vessel and again normal condition of pump web start so what happened if we require the efficiency of water at the outlet will fill by the this air vessel so we can get the uh, uh, we can get at the outlet is the continuous mass flow so air vessel will use at the delivery side as well as the at the suction side if we have a problem in delivery side then a delivery air vessel will help us and if we have a problem in suction side then a suction uh, air vessel at suction side will help, help us now we talk about the bucket pump or we can call it as a hand pump it is a simple arrangement we already seen at the villages area so this is kind of called as a donkey or we can call it as a bucket pump or we can call it as a hand pump if we um, ha uh, handle will move up and down if we move and up and down at that time what happened first we go we, we need to fill this area if we uh, move handle up and down at that time the vacuum will created here and when vacuum is created the suction valve will get open and water will come inside the this part again I push the handle downward side when I push the handle downward side at that time whatever what whatever amount of water gets collected over here this water is transferred to the this one so again what happened in the first first part when we handle up when we handle up at that time the water gets collected inside this part and again I push it down then what happened and that water get transferred to this one then same same uh, operation will occur 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 again again and again so the water collected here it transfer here it collected here it transfer here then whatever amount level is increases water level is increased water level increases and then after we can get the discharge at the delivery valve then and then we can get the discharge at the delivery valve this is a simple arrangement of the bucket pump or hand pump now we talk about the plunger pump again i repeat it is simple same arrangement of the single acting reciprocating pump just what we can we can change we can change the diameter or we can change the we can modify the piston we can just modify the piston the function is same when this piston <coughs> i will do then this piston goes in this direction reverse direction at that time vacuum is created when vacuum is created the uh, water is comes inside this cylinder and then it goes in forward direction then vacuum then the suction is valve is closed and the, the due to pressure the delivery valve is open and water gets delivered at the uh, uh, delivery side so why we can modify the piston so if we have a larger area of the piston then it is called the plunger and if we are using the plunger in place of the piston then we get the higher pressure at the delivery side 
if i require higher pressure at the delivery side then what we can do we can use the plunger in place of the piston now we talk about the second part of the pump is called the rotary pump we already discussed about the reciprocating pump from the positive displacement type now we talk about the rotary pump that is the second type of the positive displacement pump so it is a positive displacement pump with rotary motion so it in a rotary pump the liquid is entrapped in the reduced spaces between two sets of engaging surfaces such like a gear lobes vanes and screw and the pressure will rise uh, subsequently so they are suitable for pumping a various fluids like a vegetable oil liquid oil or we can call uh, we can call as a lubricating oil and grease so we have a uh, three types of rotary pump first one is the gear pump second one is the vane pump third one is the screw pump now here you can see here you can see the animated video of the gear pump so what what these are the very simple part this is the inlet part this is the outlet part when the liquid uh, particles come inside at that time it trap between two teeths here you can see it trap between two teeths and it transfer from this direction here it transfer from this direction and this is the outward part or we can call it the delivery side delivery part so it is a very simple construction here you can see here it is, this is the 2d diagram this is the actual working diagram so you can get understand that easily now this is the vane pump vane pump is also the similar kinds of pump rotary pump here you can see the animated video and here you can see the simple 2d diagram this is the inlet side this is called the outlet side water get or any kind of liquid get inside the from the inlet and it will be trapped between this rotor in this part in this part it will water liquid and uh, which step or you can consider the oily step and it transfer from this to this and this is the outlet part here you can see the so the green arrows here green is uh, liquid or oily step then it transfer to the this third side so this is called the vane pump now this is called the screw pump in screw pump we are using a two screw and that screw are rotating one is from clockwise and second one is from anti clockwise so here you can see the inlet side is this the blue color is called the low pressure and after the this red color is called the delivery side is the high pressure so when the liquids come from this side inlet side the it will be trapped between two thread and it will transfer to the screw and then whatever screw length is if we have a required high pressure we can increase the screw length if the screw length is increases then it trans when the liquid is transferred from one place to another place certain times it will increase the pressure you can see blue color is stands for the low pressure and red color is stands for the high pressure and this is the working uh, diagram and this is the our sketch the 2d sketch diagram now we talk about the centrifugal pump and so you all know the centrifugal pump is for the second type of classification of pump is called the rotodynamic pump so this is the first one pump first classification of the rotodynamic pump is a centrifugal pump it, it it is called the centrifugal pump because it work on working on centrifugal principle so here you can see that this is the pump this is the suction side so we can consider this is the suction head this is the delivery side so this is called the delivery head if we add the suction plus delivery head is equal to the static head it is called the static head so now we talk about the different types of different types different types of parts here you can see the sump here is the, the strainer one kind of uh, remove the impurities the impurity will not enter into the suction line and this is the impeller this is the guide winch pressure gauge delivery pipe delivery valve and the overhead tank where we have to supply the pressurized liquid these are the actual working animated figure of the centrifugal pump here you can see at the it, this is the inlet valve it need at the center then it goes the outward and then out at the outlet it transfer to the outlet here you also you can see the green arrows and here you can see the blue arrows so by this way the our centrifugal pump will work 
and easily we can transfer the liquid from one place to another place now we talk about the classification <coughs> classification of the centrifugal pump is based on the casing if we modify the casing the uh, centrifugal pump will change function of the centrifugal pump will change or efficiency of the pump will change so the there are three types based on the casing modification centrifugal pump with volute casing centrifugal pump with vortex casing and centrifugal pump with guide blades now is you can see this figure centrifugal pump with volute casing volute casing means this is the inlet one and this is the delivery outlet so when we start the pump then this impeller is rotated in due to the impeller is rotated water is get sucked from the center it rotated in this this part after that the in two wings this is the blades this is a two blades then the water gets outward in the impeller so the in between the two blades it get rotated and afterward it go from the casing first it rotated inside this this part then it is rotated in the impeller to between two blades and that is goes to the outward in volute casing and in the delivery valve so what happen here you can see the uh, rotation in between the two blades that at that time the ad is form a uh, due to ad is form there is a loss of energy so what we can do we can modify the casing due to the modification of casing that is called the vortex casing here wh what happen here we add the one another casing between the outer cell outer casing and inner impeller between the so what happen when the impeller is rotated the water gets suck inside this part it will rotate again it will rotate in this impeller afterwards it not directly go to the volute casing it again rotate in this part again rotate in this part which we added or modified from the volute casing again it rotate and then it goes the outward part of the volute casing and then it the water get delivered so what happened the eddies will not comes to zero formation of the eddies is not comes to zero but we can minimize by using the vortex chamber we can minimize the eddies by using the vortex chamber now third one now third one is called the centrifugal pump with guide blades so what we are using we are using guide blades in place of vortex chamber so here you can again uh, i will explain to m the impeller is rotated water gets sucked inside the inlet and then it rotated here then it goes for the rotation here and afterward guide blades are used so due glide blades are stationary guide wings are stationary so what happen this impeller is rotated whatever amount of pressure energy is generated in the water with the help of guide wings guide wings what, what what the function of the guide wings or what is the utilization of the guide wings it get diverted or gives the certain smoother outlet using the guide wings water gets or liquid gets or we can whatever amount of whatever which kind of uh, liquid we are using the pump is get diverted to the casing vortex casing or volute casing easily so there is a minimization of the formation of eddies in the centrifugal pump with the guide wings so then water is here water is rotating then after is go the outside of the impeller and after is get transferred by the smooth curve here you can see the smooth curve then it goes using this uh, guide wings it gives the direction to the flow outside the impeller and is uh, transferred to the volute casing and after rotating with the volute casing it get delivered at the required place okay so this is the importance of the centrifugal pump there are a based on the modification of the impeller we can uh, classify with the help of volute casing with the help of vortex casing and with the help of guide blades <coughs> now now last our well, uh, last topic of the chapter pump priming of centrifugal pump so we already discussed the classification of pump first one is the positive displacement pump second is the rotodynamic pump in positive displacement pump we have a certain classification like reciprocating pump and rotary pump in reciprocating rotary we have a sub classification and in rotodynamic pump we have a centrifugal pump if we 
modified the impeller then we uh, we have a three classification like volute casing vortex casing and with the guide pins so we have a reciprocating pump rotary pump and centrifugal pump three types of pump but out of these three we have to required priming in only and only in the centrifugal pump why we are not uh, do the priming for the reciprocating pump and rotary pump that we will discuss in this slide so priming is the process of filling up the suction pipe casing of the pump and the portion of the delivery pipe up to the delivery valve by liquid from outside source before starting the pump so what is the priming so priming is the process to fill up the suction pipe casing of the pump portion of the delivery pipe up to the delivery valve by liquid from the outside source before the starting the pump because when we this is suddenly we start the pump water get not sucks suck with the suction pipe why because the in the impeller there is a air and if we start the pump air will rotate and due to the air will rotate air head is created in place of the water head and air head created then the water will not get suction so thus the air is removed from this part that's why we are fill up the water to be pump so if the priming is not done before starting the pump the air pocket inside the impeller may give rise of to the formation of the vortices and cause the discontinuity of flow and water will not get suck so this is the importance of the priming in centrifugal pump now we talk about why the reciprocating pump and rotary pump not required the priming so the, there's that two pump reciprocating and rotary pump are called as a self priming pump so in a reciprocating pump priming is not required because pumping is done by the positively movement or moving the liquid fluid out of the cylinder by the piston in a reciprocating pump priming is not required because pumping is done by the positively moving the liquid or moving the fluid out of the cylinder by the piston that's why the reciprocating pump is called the self priming pump priming is not required in the reciprocating pump so that it is called the self priming pump so when the pump is start the air get displaced from this position impeller and it is not able to prime itself no externally priming is required that's why the no external priming is required so that we can call the reciprocating pump and rotary pump are called the self priming pump so today we discuss about the various types of pump function of pump classification of pump then we discuss each classification in detail with the help of animated figure or animated video and a 2d figure and last in the last topic we can conclude the our session with the help with the discussing the priming of centrifugal pump and why priming is not required in reciprocating and rotary pump or we can call as a why the reciprocating pump is called as a self priming pump so now here we conclude our session if you have any kind of doubt you can contact me you can message me or you can call me any time i will ready to help you in any any kind of topic which we already discuss or which we will discuss in further subsequent session like air compressor and many more okay so thank you students for listening me thank you so much